Webinar. Webinar is made easy. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an attendee in listen-only mode. Okay, so Brian's going to open up the questions. I'll start down here. Uh, starting with Seth. Oh. Uh, we got Seth that's on. Hey, Seth, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Can you hear me? Yes, we sure can. Okay, cool. Um, quick question. I just want to know in the coupon code, say if I want to offer a free lube with a purchase of, say, Ina. Like, is there a way of entering that in where you can do a free item with um, a certain item? Uh, not right now, but okay. possibly that's an, uh, you know, I mean, you, uh, you guys will teach us all the enhancements <laughs> that you, that we need to add into this, okay? Okay. But right at the beginning, um, the answer is no, I'm afraid not, Pat. Okay, that's all right. Good to know. But, but you know, and, and here's what we have to do, you guys. We gotta we gotta keep a little bit of a wish list going on here so that we, we can keep it rolling, okay? Yeah, we'll we'll do that give you the scenarios I guess. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you know here's the wonderful thing about this. We have a lot more flexibility with this replicating website than what we ever had with our previous one. So this is stuff in your future here, okay? All right, we've got another question. Um, this is from Tali. Tali, um, this is from Tali, but Tali does not have a mic. So, so Brian will read the question. Will we be able to change the end date of the coupon code end date after it has expired? Um, the answer to that is yes. Desiree's bobbing her head up and down saying yes. Okay. And then we're gonna go to Aubrey. Aubrey, Aubrey, we've just opened you up, doll. Would you want to? You have a question? I just want a clarification on the uh, codes. I apologize. Uh, if somebody creates a code, will it be used? Be able to be used on all consultants' websites? No. Unique to your okay. website. It's uh, your codes are unique to you, and Desiree's codes are unique to Des. Okay. The same code can't be used twice. Okay. 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 Got it. Thanks. Okay. So, um, and these are comments. Um, these are comments. I love this from Nicole. Thank um, you, Nicole Rowley. I appreciate that. And, then, and uh, Tali says thank you. So we've we'll got. Go. We can keep going. Okay. Yes. Dee -dee -dee. Okay. Um, we're gonna go back to the uh, my account section because that's pretty much uh, the gist of the coupon area here. So next briefly we'll talk about the managed traffic rotations. Now in this uh, section you'll be able to select your party and consultant rotations based on your level. Um, also please note that you may update your selections once every 30 days. So let me go ahead and get into here. Now uh, whatever you do for one type you'll want to do for the other or maybe not in which case you might have completely different set of selections you want to use, but the way to do it is still the same. So you'll choose, for this example, we'll go with consultant. This is so cool that you get to manage this yourself, and, and I can't tell you how, what a great burden that has been lifted off of us, so we're happy on this one. Hey, Des? Absolutely. So, uh, so as you can see here, uh, this particular account is only eligible for up to executive director status. Uh, any other levels, uh, example, executive director, council, or million dollar club, those two sections are grayed out because I'm not eligible for those areas. Now what you're going to want to do is basically work from the top down. And what I mean by that is you're going to start with your team manager and you're going to want to select possibly the most important areas you want to be in first and make those your top five. The top priority. Yes. And then work your way down. Uh, and then your next area that you're available, then go in order of importance and keep doing that until you've actually chosen all your areas. Now, you cannot be in an area uh, more than once. So, for example, if I tried to choose Alberta down here, I would receive a message saying that I, I could not do so. So it does have to be uh, just kind of how it is now, only once per uh, consultant and once per party. Once you put in your selections here, you'll just go ahead and click Save. And then you can see that there are dates here. I did these yesterday. 
So I won't be able to make changes to these until 30 days later, so not until January 19th, and then I'll be able to make changes to these areas. Now these areas, these dates have already come and gone, so I could make changes to these at this time if I chose to do so. And then once I do that, just go ahead and click Save. And you'll see that selections may only be updated after 30 days, so it gives you that warning again. So if you're not sure if you really want to commit to that Delaware, maybe you want to think about it a second before you hit OK. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we have a question here from Sat Vasan. Uh, Sat, we've opened you up. Go ahead, Dolph. Um, so when I'm selecting um, a, um, a state or province, is there a way when you're doing the drop-down menu, especially when you're getting into the executive director level, is there a way to gray out what you already selected so that you're not having to keep going back to see what you selected or making a list? Like, is there a way of graying out what you've selected already so that it's easier to select your next few? Does that I make see sense? What you're say I see oh. what you're saying at this point. Um, that and, and that's a, a good comment that we should um, we take note of. Okay. Um, and, and possibly, you know, that can definitely be something in your future. That that it's just so that it, you don't, you know. Uh, otherwise, here's what I would be doing. I would have a little manual list running alongside of this, so that you know, and I'd be picking things off. But yeah, um, I hear what I hear what you're saying. Yeah, it'd be, just be easier in the future, right? Just to select it right off sure. the computer, so you're not writing and stuff. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you, Seth. Do we have any other uh, comments or questions here, B? I don't have any right now. Okay, let's go, Desi. You're you're back on. Okay. So once I've updated my selections, you see you get a message here saying that your selections have been updated. Now, when I go back to the section I made a change, you can see the date has now changed to the 20th of this, which is today. And then I won't be able to make a change to this date or this selection until January 20th. So again, just kind of keep that in mind as you go through and make your changes and updates that there is a 30-day wait period before you can make another change. So think before you click. Okay, we have a question here from Phyllis. Go ahead, Phil. Okay, I understand why you've got the sections. If someone, especially on newer EDs, like drop below and they go down the executive manager rotation, then the ones for executive director are the ones that will be taken out, correct? Yes. yes. If, uh, uh, are, you, are you referring to no, when you're not, if you're going to be removed out of a certain rotation? Yes. You would be removed from bottom up. That's why you want those top ones to be your primary important ones. Thank you. That's what I thought, but I wanted to just double check. I'm sure there's lots of people who wondered that, Phil. So. Okay, do we have any other questions? Not right now. Uh, okay, carry on. Uh, actually, I think that's pretty much it as far as the YPC sections and the things that you guys would need to use as far as uh, getting that all set up, your YPC websites, and making sure your rotations are where you want. Um, in which case, I will turn this back over to Joanne at this time. Okay, so we're going to do one other thing. You'll notice a little icon there down there at the bottom that says SDK. And what we've done there is, um, and Brian, uh, you correct me if I, if, I, if I don't get this right, but you'll be able to click on that. We're going to leave the former operating system in place for approximately 30 days. If we need to make it longer, we certainly can. But you will be able to go in, you'll be able to click that, and that's going to take you over into your old operating system, your old account, and you'll be able to, you won't be able to place an order. We'll have removed that function because we don't want you doing that there because we, we, we would miss it. But, um, and you'll be able to run a downline report. You won't be able to email or place an order, but you'll be able to run a downline report. You can look at your convention passion points there. You can um, look at statements there. There's certain things, your personal volume report. You know, there'll be certain things that you can go and look in there, um, you know, and, and that's how you're going to access it. Meanwhile, we're bringing all this stuff over, and, and it's all coming over very nicely. But I know that um, you'll be, you know, it's just there 
for your comfort, for your, um, you know, your knowledge. As of? As of? 12.31. As of 12.31, yes. So when the news, and, and yes, it will be real time. It will be available. And, and then anything that happens um, after launch, after Jan 2, when we launch, that's not going to be in that system. That's going to be in our new system, okay? But you will have an opportunity to go back there and have a look, uh, have a look, see, and uh, provide comfort and let you know, okay? So, um, what do we have a question here by Phyllis? Go oh, ahead. I have Nicole. Oh, over Nicole here. Rowley. Go ahead, Nicole. I does Nick, I don't think Nick has um has the, yeah she doesn't have a mic. Here she goes. Oh, thank she says, you. yay! Thank you. Thank you for that little security. Um, and then this is from. Carolyn and Tolly both are saying thank you. Um, that's you know, and and we just thought that it would be a good idea, you know, and it it will be so it will be limited access, but it will be there so that you can see. Now, when we actually um, uh, open up, when we are we're going to launch our new system on January second, we think it'll go live about noon. So you're going to have about 36 hours where you're going to have passion withdrawal because you're not going to be able to see things, okay? But we will, you know, don't worry. We're working. Brian is here, and he's tap dancing as fast as he can, let me tell you, to make sure that everything is working. And, um, and we will have programmers on site. We will have our project manager on site. We've extended our cu our customer service hours so that you guys can, they'll be open from 7 till 7. Uh, we're going to be open on Saturday, so if you got questions. So we've got lots of, we've got all the backup put in place that you can possibly, at least that we can possibly think of to keep this all going for you. But, um, and as you see, you've seen how the new system works, so we got a lot of cool stuff going. So Phyllis, you have a question, my friend. Yes, in the SDK system, will our compressed consultants show up there, or will we have access to that list in the new system? Um, actually, we're going to be launching a new program, and I'm, um, we're just putting the final touches on this right now. It's called your VIP customer members, and compressed consultants will be um, assigned a new status within the system, and they will be called a, com a, a VIP customer. We will create uh, marketing campaigns targeting these VIP customers. This is going to create kind of a gracious place for compressed consultants to land. So what will happen is those VIP customers will be able to place orders, and they'll come in through your replicating website. We will maintain the sponsoring integrity. And they will purchase at a 25% buying discount. You will pick up the other 15% that will show up on your, um, on your bonus statement. And their orders will count towards your personal maintenance and your personal sales for uh, bonus calculations, for your um, cash bonuses, and so on. So we, are, we, we feel that these um, compressed consultants, for all intents and purposes, are a very warm market. They're a great place. Obviously, they love the product, or they would never have joined. So they've got favorites, and they want to buy. Um, they can always rejoin as a as a new consultant again. There's nothing to prevent that. So we've got a whole program mapped out for our compressed consultants. So we will move our compressed consultants for 2013 from January to November will be moved over into the, um, into the new system. They will appear in your My Customer listing, and they will be identified as VIP, okay? And then we will create some marketing um, materials that we will be targeting these VIP customers to, um, you know, to encourage ordering, to encourage party bookings, to encourage even rejoining the company. So there's lots of things happening there. So um, that's that's the future of your compressed consultants, Phyllis. And she says, um, fabulous. Thank you, Phyllis. We think it's fabulous. And, you know, it's just a nice, gracious landing place. 
sometimes it doesn't work out for whatever reason. And, and there's always, you know, people are embarrassed or whatever about not having it. But this just takes all that away and gives them a nice spot. So go ahead, uh, Brian, read the next one. Oh, Azure. Uh, we have a call for, or we have a comment from Azure. Go ahead, yes. Azure. Thank you guys so much. I'm loving the VIP idea. I think it turns a really feel bad situation into a feel not so bad situation. So I appreciate that. And it gives us the opportunity for residual income. And um, the future, future marketing for that is awesome too. I am absolutely loving all of that. Thanks so much for that, you guys. Oh, you're very welcome. We think that it, it, you know, I mean, and that people who don't make it for whatever reason, you know, sometimes they're embarrassed. Sometimes they, you know, they think they let people down. Well, we, we still, you know, they can still make a contribution this way. So thanks for that, um, Azure. Sure. Brian, do you I, want to, I'm sorry. I was, I was wondering if we had consultants or leaders underneath us who rolled out of the business, um, do their, do their VIPs roll up to our, to our first level VIP yes. or whatever you guys were doing with that? Yes, they do. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's yes, exciting. They, but they, they will stay attached to you until you're no longer attached to us. Um, last question I have is oh. from um, Roxy Haynes. So. Okay, Roxy, Ro Roxy Brian's going to read your question. Go ahead, B. I have a question about our new websites and what we may be able to possibly add. Would we be able to add add or post something as on a landing page for those who may want to sign up for our own newsletters and such. I'm not sure. Can we do, I, you know what? Thank you for that, Roxy. Let me check into that one and maybe that's something that could be, I don't know if that can happen right now or it would be something that will be in your future. So we'll find out about that. But that's a great suggestion. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So Desi, you're you are done, right, Desiree? Yes, so Desiree is heaving a great sigh of relief, and I think I want you all to sit there in front of your computer screens and give Desiree a big round of applause because she stepped way out of her comfort zone to to do this, and I thank you for that because if I had done it, it would not have been uh, it would not have been pretty girl. So uh, thank you for that, Des. Okay, so and De we've got a little comment here. People are saying, round of applause, round of applause. See, they love you, Desiree, so thank you. So um, next we're going to um, introduce um, our project manager, uh, this great guy who um, Brian and I um, uh, have grown very fond of and, and work very closely with. His name is Chetty, and Chetty's going to talk to you about what we call the BBS. Now, the BBS is your business building system. It's a contact management system. It's where you're going to manage um, your leads and all this kind of thing. There's going to be two versions of the BBS, um, but, and we will identify what that's all about um, a little bit down the track. But right now, Chetty's going to go through the BBS uh, full-blown um, uh, full version of it, okay? And he also had a comment regarding the last question we had about setting up a site for our replicating, set up a page in our replicating site for a, promote, for a special promotion. So I, I'll let him discuss that one. Okay. So um, well, with that, we're going to welcome Chetty. Are you there, Chetty? Just one moment. Ma Chetty's coming on. Brian has to work some kind of magic. I don't know what it is. But um, again, uh, this was a topic that I am learning. Um, I know enough to be really dangerous on this one. So. Um, We'll go from there. So, okay, Brian, are we good to go? I'm just waiting for him. To... Okay, so Chetty, do you, Chetty, will we pass this over to you? Can we hear you, Chetty? Brian? He needs to enter his pen. Huh? Oh, Chetty needs to enter his PIN. So I love it that um, that uh, we still need. Okay. So where did he go? Ryan. 
What's going on here? See what I mean? I'm dangerous. <laughs> anyway, I think it's all coming together while they sort this thing out. We think it's all coming together. Um, I have to be honest with you guys. There's days I go home and I'm walking on air. There's days I go home and I'm panic-stricken and suffer from anxiety. But um, I think that we we, we think we've uh, attacked and, and, and worked on a lot of things. Um, Hi, can you hear me now? Yeah, we've got, there you go, Chetty. But we think it's all going to come together really well. So, um, but I, as I said earlier, I'm so depending on you guys to be my ambassadors um, and to help people when they ask questions and explain things and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So with that, Chetty, can we, is Chetty in control? He's in control. Oh, that's scary. Okay, Chetty, way to go. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you all this afternoon. I'm excited to show you guys the BBS and some of the new features that you'll have in the system. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, give you a general idea of what the BBS is. It's um, a lead management contact management system. This is the place where all of the leads that get put in through the lead rotation and stuff, when they come to your replicated website, they will, be in, uh, they will have the option of entering different forms. Once they fill out any of those forms, that user will be inserted into your BBS for you to contact them. Now, in regards to these forms, each one of the forms are going to require specific information on there. Uh, one requirement is going to be an email address. Another one is going to be a phone number. So you'd have at least two very good methods of attempting to contact those people to convert them either into customers or to um, consultants. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the website and where the forms are located. Where these, and these are going to be the forms that your leads are going to basically be filling out and submitted to the BBS. So right now on my screen, I just have the um, regular passion website up. Now this is going to this is Vine's website, so right, it's a specific replicated website right now. What's going to happen is that when a lead comes to the website, they're going to click on the host a party link if they're interested in parties, and from there at the bottom of that page, they're going to have a form to fill out. Now, if you'll notice on these forms, there are some specific fields that have red asterisks next to them. And each one of those fields with a red asterisk basically means that's a required field. Um, we've done also some additional validation on some of the fields to try to reduce the amount of bad information that will be inserted via these forms. And we've also done some items to try to lower the amount of spam that you would get through these forms from, auto, from web bots filling out the form automatically. So, um, and it's, for example, the email address, we're going to require that it has to be a specific format. So that way someone can enter just um, gibberish information into that field. The phone number is going to be required to be um, 10 digits and it has to be numeric. And uh, the postal code is going to have to be a numeric field that's five digits long if it's the US and um, six digits long as, if it's Canada. And for Canada, it's going to be alphanumeric as well. Now, those are the three fields that we currently validate, and that should help reduce the amount of um, bad information that will be submitted via any of these forms. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fill out each one of the forms. I'm going to show you where each one is located. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and fill out this form as Brian because he's going to be very interested in having a party starting in the new year. Um, going to um, and seven thirty one pilot road. And just select the country, the United States, and then I'm going to select the state, Florida, and put in the age of twenty five because mine's young. And he wants to have a party um, on the launch date. So we're going to do for 12 slash 2014 and put in comments. So that's the basic information that the form will collect. Now, at the bottom of the page is a cap it's what we call a capture. And this basically requires. It's, tried, it's designed to try to get a human user to put in information here so that they, um, so it reduces the amount of spam that will be filled out in each one of these forms. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put in 14. 
and then click submit. The next thing that's going to happen is that you're going to get this page that shows uh, the user is going to get this page that shows up that says thank you for submitting your information. This information is now going to be inside the BBS um, for you to review uh, at your leisure. They'll get an, um, this message basically says that you'll contact them within 24 hours. So I'm inside the VBS, I'm going to show you how that would work um, once we get there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Question that I want to I want to open up um, Aubrey for just one moment. Okay. I just had a quick question about the. I just had a quick question about the party date field. Uh, you put in like a full date. Does it have to be a full date, or can they say sometime in January? Um, they would actually have to put a date in because we do validate on that as well. That's another field. But they don't have to put in a full date. They can just put um, 115 or, or 12 something. Is it possible to make that a text field rather than a specific date? Um, I can check on that. It's, yeah, it's possible that we can do that, change it to a text field. Okay. And then something else that I know a lot of consultants have been asking for is if it's possible to also get a checkbox by that that says, is this date firm? Okay. Or if you're flexible, because I know that's something that people have had some issues with. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I, I think we can make the update, so I'll just talk to Brian about um, exactly when we want to make those modifications, and we'll put that, those in place. All right, thank you. Okay. We're actually writing down these, these comments and, and suggestions, so thank you. Okay. I have another one more question. Okay. And this is from um, Caroline McCulley. So you're open. Yeah, I noticed on this page it has, um, it says that you're going to receive an email confirmation that has an opt-in page. Is that a yeah. legal requirement? And if they don't opt-in, can we not email them, or what are the restrictions there? So that's a requirement for um, can spam. So we requ our system requires them to do what's called a double opt-in, which in this case they fill out the form and then they receive an email at their email address where they have to opt in to in order to receive future emails from us. Um, what you have the option inside the BBS, if someone says that they never received it, you can resend that email. But until they choose to opt in that email address, you won't be able to send any emails to it. So even if we went to like our own personal Yahoo email and tried to email them, it wouldn't go through. Or if you did that through a Yahoo email, that would go through. But if you did try to do it through um, the BBS system, it will not send it out. Okay, because that, that's my concern. If they don't get it, well, we can't email them to find out that they didn't get it. Right. So okay, so we just have to use our personal email then. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, the other form that I was going to go over is the uh, Become a Consultant form. So this is located in the Become a Consultant page. It's going to be the same form as the, um, as the host a party form with the exception it's not going to have a party date field on it. So any user that um, clicks on the contact me for more information anywhere throughout this page will be taken to the um, Become a Consultant form. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and submit this information to the BBS as well. So. And I'm going to put a note here to um, basically a checkbox here to say OK to text. And what that does is just checks the field on their record to let you know that they're okay with receiving text messages from you. Right now, the system isn't set up to send out automated text messages. So any text messages that have to be sent out, well, you'd have to send it out personally from your phone. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out this capture information and then just click Submit. And I'm going to get a similar form as the one previously in which it's going to say that the information has been received and they've been sent an email. So that takes care of the Become a Consultant part of the um, form. The third form that's on the website is the Contact Me form. And this form is located on the Contact Me section of the website. 
It doesn't collect as much information as the um, other two forms. This is just basic, mostly going to be used for someone that's looking for more information in general, maybe regarding the product or they needed some assistance with something. Whereas the other two forms are more along the lines, it's very specific that someone wants to become a host or a party, or are they interested in becoming um, part of the business. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this form out. And use Joanne's name. Okay. Um, Need more information on romantic therapy? Okay. Um, actually, there's also some other stuff regarding rules for these forms that I just need to mention to you so that you're aware of them. For the, um, for the contact me form, a user can come here and fill out this form, use the same email address as many times as they want and submit it to, to that same person. In regards to the become a consultant form, there's a limitation that they can only submit that um, email address once to a, to a, to a rep. And for the um, host a party form, they could submit it once every three months. So those are some current limitations if someone ever gets their message saying that, um, that their email can't be submitted on the form. It, it would be regarding one of those two rules that, they, that they've already submitted their information within a three-month period or that they've already submitted their information for the host a party. I mean, the host a consulted form. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filling out this form and then submit this information. And it's going to do the same thing as the other forms. It's just going to give you a generic page that tells you um, the information has been submitted and someone's going to contact them within 24 hours. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to the BBS. I have that open on this window right here. And this is the home page for the BBS. So what I'm going to do since um, I entered information after I was on this page. I'm just going to go ahead and refresh the page. I click, can, ah, just one second. I guess it's timed out. There we go. Okay. So this is basically, once again, this is the home page. This is your activity dashboard that will show up in the BBS. Now, the way this activity dashboard works is that any new uh, lead that fills out a form would automatically show up on this dashboard. In the case of someone that's filled out the form um, two days ago, or more than two days ago, their information will show up in red down here at, at the bottom section of the form. Anyone that filled out the form within the past two days, I mean, yeah, within the past two days, which would be the 19th and the 20th, they would, they would show up in green on this, form, on this section here. And then anyone that fills out the form today, they'll show up in black at the top of the form. So it's, the form is, um, so it started in the order of the, late, of the newest person at the top, the oldest at the bottom. It shows basic information such as lead name, their um, email, their phone number, and the activity that's automatically set every time this is filled out is for someone to contact them because we do try to collect the phone number on every one of the forms. And then it has a date here of 12, right now it has a date of 12, 21. So it's trying to get you to complete this information within 24 hours so that you know that this person came in today, you should be contacting them by tomorrow um, to do the lead, to try to convert them either into a lead, into a customer or a representative. Now, you can click on any one of these two fields and it'll take you directly into the contact information for that lead. So for example, I clicked on mine, the one that I submitted on the Become a Consultant form. If you notice, the first top part of the form will show you the uh, general information, which is going to have my name, my email address, and the address, my home address that I filled out. The second part is going to show the lead activity dashboard. This shows basically anyone that's going to be on that front page dashboard, they're going to have something populated here. If they're not going to be in the front page dashboard, they're not, this section is not going to um, display any information here. The system information is basically the date that the lead was created. So right now they were created at um, 1220 at 254 p.m. And keep in mind that the time in the system is going to be for, the, for these lead creation stuff is Eastern Standard Time. The next section is basically the Managed Contact section. This section here 
is it shows you the status of the lead. So they're going to have um, status of being active. Anyone that's set up, that's created in any form in the system, they automatically get that status status set. Sorry, set to be active. It's up to you to change them to become um, inactive or anything like that. This type here, this is basically the lead type, and that's set by the form that they fill out. So if someone filled out the host to party form, the lead type would say party host. If they filled out the become a consultant form, the lead type says become a consultant. And if they filled out the contact information form, it'll, the lead type says general information. If someone came in through the become a consultant form and they're more interested in becoming a party hostess, you could change this um, by just switching the type to be party host. Okay? And these are the general notes that they inputted on the form that show up here. You can add additional notes if you wanted to. Um, uh -huh. I, have a, I have a quick question. I'm going to open up Rocky Haynes. Okay. Hey, Rocky. I was trying to, I'm trying to not ask a question what, as, as, as I'm listening because it gets confused. But I, I love this dashboard thing, being able to go ahead and, and take a look and see where thing, people are coming from. So my question is, if they're going to our own website and they're filling this out, then we're going to be able to look in the dashboard and have more information. Versus if they go to the company website and they fill in the information. Um, I just kind of want to determine what's a company, where they, if they went to the company for this, for the lead, or if they found me on the website. Is, is this just for people that went to our website? Well, this, this is for people that went to the replicated website, which would be your specific website. Now, it's my, from the way things are set up right now in the system, any leads that come to Passion Corporate, like passionparties.com, and they yes. choose to say they're interested in the host of party form or something like that, they normally select um, what state they're in or, or country. And they, once they select that, they get routed to our website, and then they're automatically assigned to an, a replicated website. So the leads from passionparties.com do get routed out to replicated websites in that method. And once you fill out the form, you get the information in here. OK. Is there any way to determine whether or not they went to the company website first? No, not, not through the BBS. There isn't any way to determine that. OK. So all all leads, whether or all requests, will come in through um, will come here and be posted and shared for us to find out about whether or not they went to the company first or they found us directly through our website. Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, um, let me just make sure I understood the question correctly. <laughs> I know I get nervous um, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. If someone came directly to your replicated website and they filled out a form, they will appear in here. Okay. If the company um, this, uh, assigns a lead to your website and they choose to fill out a form, they will appear here. If they choose okay. not to fill out a form, you won't see them at all. Okay. okay. And you don't see any leads that were sent to any other consultants. You only see the leads that are or, that are filled out a form on your replicated website. Okay. Well, I never understood our old method. I didn't understand the footprints and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That was like over my head. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Ho hopefully I've explained it pretty decent. <laughs> if, if there's any more questions, just go ahead and I'll, right, I'll just I'll shut up and time. watch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Are there any other questions? I have one more question. Seth, have your hand raised. Seth, you're, you're open. Your mic's open. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, um, thanks, Brian. Um, question for you, and so, all right, so somebody fills in the information, and it comes onto my website, and it auto-populates everything in here, and they become my client. Let's just say it's a YPC lead, and they fill in all the information. Now, if I'm giving away that party to another consultant, um, now, because they're in my database, do I have to physically go in here and delete them, and then that consultant's going to have to add them? Um, because I don't, I mean, obviously, they don't, we don't want to bombard them and they're getting, um, you know, newsletters from various consultants. Is there something in place for that? Or uh, I don't even know if that makes sense, what I'm trying to ask. Okay. The way I would envision that working is that if you were going to give this lead to someone else, 
they would you give them the the contact information um, either via email or something like that. And then once they host the party, they actually get created as a customer under that consultant. So they can send them emails through through their customer through the BBS the customer. Um, <laughs> and what you would probably want to do here is just mark this lead as opted out, or you can even delete them from here so that you don't send them any emails, or mark them as, as inactive, so they're inactive in your system. Okay. It's, it's so, Charlie, we, right now we don't have any more questions, but I want you to finish your presentation, and then we'll take questions, and then, so, so, so we won't have any interruptions, okay? Okay. Not a problem. All right. So I think the last section I was talking about was the managed contact section. Below that is the campaign information section. So now um, the way this works is that there, in the system you can create campaigns and corporate can create campaigns. So right now the first three campaigns are corporate created campaigns and they're specifically tied to the um, they're they're specifically tied to different lead types. In this case, this will become a consultant lead. So corporate has a campaign called a new consultant lead campaign that they automatically get populated to. And a campaign in, uh, is basically a set of time sequence emails that are geared towards the form that someone filled out. So, for example, someone that showed, filled out to become a consultant form, it would seem that they are interested in learning about the business. So, they're, right now, they're assigned to, um, they're automatically assigned to the corporate campaign of new consultant lead, which is going to try to talk to them about the business, about the type of opportunities you have, how to host a party, the type of compensation, and things like that. But that will all be said about Brian and his team. And what the content is, I, I'm just giving you a general example of what in, what that could entail. The other option that you're going to have is that you can create your own custom campaigns. Um, once you create your custom campaign, you can assign them out to, to different leads. For example, interested in becoming a fashion consultant, that's a custom campaign I, I created yesterday as a test campaign to, de to demonstrate. And um, it was set up for the uh, become a consultant lead. So every time a new person fills out that form, my custom campaign is also added to that so that they can um, receive that information. Anyone that fills out the form before I created that campaign and I wanted to assign it to them, I have to manually assign it to that, to that person. But future people that have filled out, they, the campaign will go out automatically for them. Okay. So that's in general what the um, contact information page is all about. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, um, to the home page one more time. So if you notice at the top, there's a couple of different icons. The, um, the home icon will always bring you back to this page. Then there's a contacts icon. This will always bring you into the address book for the BBS. By clicking on this icon, it's going to take you into here. The, um, the first set of people that always appear in the address book are the leads. So the, this is the first one that's always going to show up. And if you notice, on the left-hand corner to that, it's, they have different lead types. So there's a general information one which has four, lead, four leads within there. There's a party host one that has seven, and there's a become a consultant one which has five. That basically is a count of everyone that's filled out that form um, on your replicated website. So if you wanted to differentiate our, the people, or we'll just look at like let's say the become a consultant leads, you would just go ahead and click this um, button, and it's going to only display the, cons the leads that came in through the consultant form. Okay. The um, then if you notice, there's lead statuses here as well. So if you want to see the active leads, you can click to see only the active leads. If you want to see the inactive ones, you click inactive and you'll see the inactive ones. So these are a couple of quick filters that try to um, reduce the amount of data that's been presented to you. Uh, another option that shows up here is customers. Customers are going to be anyone that you've created inside the um, – that has purchased from you from your replicated website or that you've created in the party system of the back off of the passion app, or that you have created using the customer dropship order option. They're all going to be shown up in here as customers. So once you um, once the customer at, customer information shows up here, there will be two types of customer statuses once a VIP one is set up. Right now, everyone that's created in the system is a retail customer. and once a VIP one is set up, you'll see another link here that says VIP uh, customers, and you'll be able to click on that. And that's going to be for all the people that converted to be, be VIP customers. Okay. Um, the other options that you have on this page are you have the ability to add a lead. So you can go ahead and click here, 
and you can add the lead that um that someone maybe you've talked to a, a show or something like that and you got their name and email address. You would go ahead and input their information here and input their email address. Once you fill out the form and you click add lead, they'll be sent an opt-in email asking them to opt in to receive future emails from you. So um, the system always sends out an opt-in email to make sure it gets um, someone's response back saying it's okay to send them emails. Okay. The other option here is the manage custom fields option. If there, this is going to be basically specific to you. Let's say there's um, certain information you want to capture. For example, right now in the system we do capture like the birth date, their anniversary date. Um, if you wanted to, for example, um, no, birth dates, anniversary dates. Um, if you want to capture a party date, for example, you can create a field called uh, party date. And you would select, you type in the field name, party date. You would type in, you would select date picker, which is basically a calendar. And you make sure you select this as enabled and click save. And that's going to save that field. Now I'm going to go back to the contacts area and show you where that field will show up. So, for example, I'm going to click on this account and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And that shows up under the custom fields area and I'll show here as party date. And then when so you click this, it's going to pop over the calendar, so you can select the date that you want to input there. If someone's filled out the party date form, that information will automatically be populated. So if there's any custom fields that you wanted to create for information you want to specifically track, you can do that in the system as well. And um, it'll be added to the record, and then you just have to populate the information for each one of the leads that you collected it for. Okay. Now the last part is to export contacts. This will allow you to export all, your, all of your customers and your leads, and it goes out in the regular CSV form. So, um, for example, I'm going to pop one up right now. It'll show up in a form just like this, so you'll be able to import it into any other mail applications if you wanted to. So it, it just gives you the ability to um, control you. Um, you have full control of your leads or access to your leads. Okay. Oops. Okay. All right, so that takes care of the lead part. Um, there's one other thing I forgot to mention earlier in the manage, manage contact area. It has the ability here to set an appointment. You can click on the set appointment, and it'll automatically bring up this window here with the information for that lead that you filled out. So it's going to show that in the notes section, and then you can set up an appointment to be on a specific date, uh, date or time, and save it into the BBS. So that will show up in your BBS calendar whenever um, you log back into the BBS. And normally what happens is that um, 15 minutes before the meeting, the BBS calendar will, will pop up with a reminder letting you know that the meeting is coming up. But in order for that to work, you have to be logged into the BBS. If you're using a separate calendar application, you're able to um, export any of your appointments or export the calendar from the BBS to a CSV file, and then you would import that file into whatever application that you're using for your calendar. Okay. okay, all right, now I'm going to go back to the home page. There's two main things that you um, will be uh, setting up in the BBS to contact people with. One is the broadcast messages. So I'm going to click on broadcast messages. It's going to bring me to a page that's going to show me the last set of broadcast messages that I created. Very, um, I'm sorry, the last 10 broadcast messages that were created. Right now there's only two in here, but um, as, as it fills up, it'll just show the, the the last 10. And also it shows you the broadcast templates that are created in the system. These templates can be created by corporate or they can be created by you. Um, so you have the option here where it says create a template to create a new broadcast template with the format, contents and stuff that you want. And if it's very specific, maybe to products or to a sale or something like that, you may want to create a sale template that you'll be using in the future or something. So you can utilize that to create a template that you can use um, Within once you create, start creating broadcast messages. So I'm going to go through the process of creating a broadcast message. So click create broadcast message. The first thing it does, it asks you um, who do you want to send the emails to. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say leads. I want to do the uh, party host leads, and I just want to do everyone that's active. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. The next screen basically asks you, do you want to use a broadcast template? And it gives you the option of selecting one of these templates. Um, if you want to see what the contents of the templates are, you can click on the HTML here, 
and it's going to show you what the template will look like that you, if you choose to use it. Uh, I think these are right now generic, but they, um, they're going to be updated to have more content in there. Okay. Um, or if you just wanted to bypass all of that, you just go ahead and click Create New, and it'll create a brand new, te uh, brand new broadcast message for you to use. So it's going to be a blank template, basically. So you can go ahead and type in um, whatever your broadcast message subject is going to be. So, so maybe I'm going to go ahead and create a subject that says hosted party rules. And from here, basically, I'm going to create uh, here. And since it's all going out to party leads, I can go ahead and use their first name. Just go add that there. And the system's going to auto populate their first name for each one of the emails that go out. And it's going to put a note so below are the rules for hosting party. And you can just do this as an example template, I mean, example broadcast message. And then after this, I go ahead and click continue. And it brings me to the send your broadcast message on page. You have two options here. The first option is to submit your broadcast message now. So it will be submitted right away to be sent out. If it's going out to a very large audience, the um, emails will be queued up to be sent out. Um, like if it's several thousand people, it's probably going to take a few hours to get for all the emails to go out. If it's a few hundred people, it's probably going to be within an hour or so to go out. Okay. Right now, the, this section shows you what the uh, subject of the email is, what the selection was for the people to receive it, and right now I have the total recipients. Um, it's going to be seven. Now, this seven includes people that may have not opted in as yet. So as soon as they opt in, they'll be able to get the emails. They're, they're, or queued up for them. If they don't opt in, then they never receive it. The other option that they have is select a date and time to send your broadcast message. If you wanted to time it to go out specifically on Monday morning at 3 a.m., you can do that as well. You just select the date, select the time, and then click Save Schedule Broadcast Message, and the system will queue it up to go out on, on that date and time. Okay, so I'm not going to send this out because this is a live system and all the emails will go out if, if they've opted, if anyone, if any of the accounts have opted in. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home page. The other option that you have here is custom campaigns. So in the custom, custom campaigns are going to be time sequence email campaigns that can be created in the system and you would attach them to specific leads. Um, if you were trying to educate, so, um, one of the things you could do for like party host is try to tell them about the um, rules of having a party and how to have a party and what the best um, best practices are for having a party, for hosting a party. So you can give them a set of time sequence emails that would give them, would provide them with that information, and you would set up the, um, sorry, <coughs> you would set up how often each one of the emails go out. So if one goes out today. When would the next one go out? Is it going to go out tomorrow or the day after? You you would set all that up, saying that each email goes out after a specific period of time. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and edit the interest in becoming a consultant um, podcast. Just misspelled. Fix that. Okay. All right. So this one has three emails here. So the first email right now, I'm going to go ahead and edit it. It gives you a few options here that says uh, you put in your front email address, you put in your subject, and you, you click that it's enabled, and that this email will be set up to be going out with the um, in sequence with, with the other emails. The first email that goes out from um, any campaign will always be set to zero, so that means it will go out the same day that the lead is created, as long as they opt in the same day. I'm sorry, I should rephrase that. It will go out the same day that the lead opts in. <laughs> To receive the messages. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this message. And then, if you notice, there's a test email three here. And the reason that's shown up in the second spot is because on these areas here with sequences, I can move these emails around if I, if I in the future I choose to change them. 
So I can um, move this one down if I wanted to, so three goes to the top, or I can move two to the second spot. So these sequences allow you to change the emails around. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that if you notice that day numbers have updated and changed. So that basically means that the one that had the zero day on it is now goes out at the at the last because I had that as the first uh, and moved that down to the last. So that means this one doesn't go until day four, basically. So you have to be very careful when you move the sequences around that you want to update the days correctly to ensure that they receive it in, in the days that you intend for them to receive it. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and move the first email back up to the first one. And I'm going to go ahead and edit um, test email two to show you how the other one is set up. So it has the same stuff, the um, front email, the subject, and it says days from previous. So that means since the last email went out, how many days after do you want this one to go out? So this one set up as day one from the previous one. So this is basically if I received the email yesterday, this one goes out today, and if there's another one set for day one, that one goes out tomorrow and stuff like that. Okay. So I think that pretty much covers it for the um, custom campaigns. Uh, for their sequences, now each one of the campaigns can only be set, set up to be um, on one entity. So for example, we have this one sent up to be for leads. Now I can check more than three lead types if I wanted to. I mean, I could check all three lead types if I wanted to. But in general practice, most of the campaigns have been very specific to the lead types because it's specific people filling out specific forms for specific information. So I recommend that whenever you do your campaigns that they're always for one specific group of people. So it can be more targeted than if, if you try to make it more general because then that information may be lost in them if they're not looking for that. So, um, so whenever you set up campaigns, just make sure that all they're all tailored specifically to the entities that you want and to the types that you want to um, receive them. Okay. Okay. Um, the last part of this is going to be the reports. In the report section, there's um, generic reports that we're going to have in here, and these basically show you how the uh, campaigns have been performing. So, for example, um, any campaign that you create that's a custom campaign, for example, interested in becoming a consultant, I, you'd click on it, it'll show you each one of the emails that have been created, it'll tell you how many of them. I'm sorry, how many of them have been sent out? And if they had specialized links in them to be clicked through back uh, back to specific places, I'm sorry, excuse me, specialized links to be clicked back through, they'll show you those link clicks in here. Now, um, you can use this for what, to gather whatever information that you want. For example, if you see a lot of your first ones are going out, but your second ones are not, it could mean that a lot of people opt out after the first email, so you may need to um, modify the first email to be uh, better for them or more, condu more conducive to keeping them to receiving the emails. Okay, so that basically is the um, key part of how the BBS works. Are there any questions? Okay, well, the, uh, I'll, I have a few questions that I'll, I'll read off for you. Um, this okay. one from Sanders. Um, she says, I'm a little confused. Sorry. If they don't opt in, can we email them through BBS? No, the BBS will not allow the emails to go out if they have not opted in. However, they can export the contact information and attempt to email them through their local email client. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. They can export the information to their local email client and send it out. Because the key reason that we try to do the opt-in is to prevent us from being called as spammers. So we try to keep – that way it allows our emails to be continuously delivered. So until people opt-in, we can't really send them an email. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to open up um, Amy Barclay. Amy, you're open. Hey there. Um, two little mm -hmm. questions for you. Um, one, is there, so I'm all about automation and I don't have time for data entry, so is there a, a form, and this is probably a future request, uh, that we can use at a party to get the customers to enter their contact info? Because not everyone at a party orders, but there's still potential um, clients and leads and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'd let Brian answer that. Yeah. Because it's more of a decision on their side. 
Yeah, that's something we're going to have to um, look into and get back to. I think right now, I mean, the, the best option for that is is either we or either you create a form or corporate creates a form for you where you can come in here and, and manually enter your your leads into the system. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll have to have that discussion offline and figure out how we can uh, accommodate that request. Okay. Okay. And um, will we be allowed to do a, an initial upload? of our past leads or, or maybe on a monthly basis or something? Yes, you will. And um, I'm currently um, working with Joanne to um, put together an email blast out to the field force regarding the requirements of that import file as far as what records they're going to need in the exact order um, they will need it in to, to import your lead into the system. So the answer is yes. Will that be just at the beginning or, or will we be able to do it down the road as well? Well, we're going to have a one-time import right now, and then we'll, okay. we'll, have to have a, we'll have to have another discussion if we're going to do that again. Okay? Cool. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Next, I'm going to open up um, Aubrey. She had a comment. Oh, I just wanted to say how great the BBS is. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> Everything there. It's just it's a system that I've tried to create with other things and you've got everything in one and I'm really happy with that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. It means a lot. <laughs> Let me open up Caroline McCauley. Hey, I had two quick questions. Your emails, can we include images in them, or is it just going to be text and font changes? Well, you can create images and put them in there. You have to reference them similar to how you do it in, on any HTML email. So it would have to be in a public server somewhere that won't block the image from being pulled into the email. Okay, cool. And then my other question, I may have missed this, I'm sorry. Um, in creating the different types, you've got party leads, consultant leads, you know, general questions. Can we make more categories if we want to put like all our January customers in one, you know, February, March, can we make a bunch of different types of categories? Not currently. Um, that's something we'll probably have to talk to Brian about on how that would work. Well, it, actually, if you explain to us how that's going to work, then we can figure out something to do about that. But yeah, not currently. Okay, thank you. However, you could create a custom field, and then and, and yeah, yeah with custom that? fields, would that work? I mean, then can you just search, you know, everybody that has January in the custom field or something? Yes, you will be able to do that. Will that work the same for products? Could we do a custom field where here's their order and here's their wish list then? Well, actually, products do not show up in the VBS, so there won't be any no. way to do that with products right now. So, with the, even using the custom fields, we couldn't do that. Yeah, you could. So you could so then we can send an email for everybody that needs a refill on shaving cream because it's in there. Yeah. yeah, they ordered it. Yes, that will work. Okay, cool, awesome, even better. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to open up Polly. Just one moment. Oh, she doesn't have a, a phone on. So she said, "I'm sorry if I missed something." We will be entering the information for everyone. They won't transfer over when we are putting orders in, correct? That's actually incorrect, and I'll let Chetty explain. Okay. For anyone that you create in the system, either that came to the replicated website that went that you created an order for them inside the party system or the dropship customer orders, their records will automatically be created inside the BBS. Now it'll show their Gen demographic information such as their name, email address, phone number, and, a and home address. It will not show them what their order history or anything like that is. Perfect. Do we have any more questions? Tali says thank you, Chetty. Do we have any more questions? Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, we're going to end this webinar. Uh, we all appreciate you, you, you getting online and, and watching this webinar. If you, have any, if you think about any, any questions, please feel free to e email myself or Joanne Harvey, and, and we'll try to um, get back to you with an answer to your question. So I'd like to thank you all for attending, and um, have a great holiday season.